you wonder he's such an inspirational brings you back to you know your yesteryears doesn't it oh yes <laughs> but that's why i said i think my producers have been love is even because last week we had signs he delivered there you go and, and this you know, week is i just called to say i, I love just you. called to say i love you okay okay uh sports medicine uh stay tuned uh stay tuned for this segment give us a call the number stated on the screen just mm -hmm. now two two eight two nine zero six two or two two eight two three zero four three um let's say hello to our esteemed guest dr harjit singh a consultant orthopedic surgeon from columbia asia hospital thank you for joining Hi. us this morning good morning. Good morning. Mm -hmm. good morning uh maybe let's let's start off with the main question what is sports medicine i mean mm -hmm. can you just decipher that for us okay actually um sports medicine uh it it encompasses a wide range of uh, area. Mm -hmm. You actually go through preventive uh, diagnosing, uh -huh. treating, and uh, rehabilitating injuries mm -hmm. which are associated with sports, whether mm -hmm. high level mm -hmm. or recreational. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's not only something that athletes uh, get and we deal with them, right. you also deal with uh, weekend warriors, people like me and you who <laughs> exercise only Out in the, the weekends yeah okay. once in a while, once in a while. <laughs> so okay. that's pretty much sports medicine yeah too. that's sports medicine um, um, right. what's the difference between a sports medicine specialist and an orthopedic surgeon okay uh, essentially the orthopedic surgeon is both a physician and mm -hmm. a surgeon mm -hmm. and uh, traditionally we were the ones who actually took care of sports injuries right. okay now sports medicine is growing very fast i think it's also coming off its own in mm. malaysia mm -hmm. so we now have sports medicine physicians mm -hmm. who don't these handle, under preventive yeah they they handle the preventive okay they diagnose and they treat mm -hmm. but if there is a surgical option that you have to actually consider then mm -hmm. you still need to go to the orthopedic surgeon mm -hmm. uh, especially those who are trained mm -hmm. in sports injuries mm -hmm. so there's actually now the orthopedic surgeon the sports medicine physician and someone in between the oh, orthopedist it's yeah it's beginning to overlap Okay. Right, right, right. So let's talk about sports injuries itself. What kind right. of sports injuries? I mean, for people like you and me who do this once in a blue moon exercise, okay. ouch, I think I revealed that. Uh, you know, we get little, little injuries. But for general people who yes. are into sports, okay. uh, what are the main kind of injuries that we will probably be treating? So actually, I, there are two groups of injuries. Mm -hmm. One is injuries due to overuse. Mm -hmm. Okay, we all train. Mm -hmm. And there is such a thing as overtraining. Okay, right. Okay. So, if you overtrain, you will get an overuse injury. Okay, okay. So, that's one group of injuries. The second one is an acute injury. Mm. You know, you get a bad tackle or a yeah. bad fall and you get an acute injury. You might rupture a ligament mm. or you tear mm. a ligament. Mm. So, it sounds painful. Yeah, it's definitely very, very painful. So, you actually have totally two groups. Right, One, okay. the acute injury whereby you get injured and you come straight away. Right. Mm -hmm. And you have the second one, which you get a small, small injuries uh -huh. and you have pain on and off and mm -hmm. you come when you can't stand the pain. Okay. Um, I think we can talk, uh, I would like to ask you one about how can sport injuries be prevented okay. and second, what kinds of treatments are there? I mean, in Malaysia, are we mm. as technologically advanced as our neighbouring countries? Okay, uh, I'll start with the first one, mm -hmm. prevention. Uh, prevention is always better than cure. Yes. Okay, um, first thing is you, you need to know the exercise and the sport that you're getting into. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. And uh, I think the days are gone where you just run out and play. Mm. So you need to invest in proper attire, you need to invest in shoes. shoes and all that. Mm. And uh, you need to learn the technique. Mm. I mean, you don't play golf if you're a hockey player and you think you can play golf. Right. I tried it, it doesn't work. You, you don't so, go on a two-hour marathon just because you go for a brisk walk every day. No, no, you don't watch TV <laughs> and decide that you want to exercise. Okay. So you need to learn the technique mm -hmm. well, mm -hmm. okay? And then, other than that, you always follow the structure of uh, warming up properly before your exercise. Mm. In stretching, that's mm. very important because you need to increase the flexibility of your muscles right. first. Mm. And right. then you need to increase the temperature. Uh -huh. And then you exercise. Now, after exercise, it's not smart to go straight for te tare in a mama shop. What you need to do is you need to warm down. Mm. So now, if you do it that way, then you tend to prevent most of the injuries. People can get injured even by doing weights, right? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. So we're seeing something on the screen right now, mm. Doctor. Maybe you can explain a little bit about this. Oh, okay. Now, uh, the most important thing is why is exercise so, uh, so good for you yeah. is mm. that every part of our body actually mm -hmm. 
functions, uh, it's not something static. So I, I feel the bone is mm -hmm. the best example. Okay. When you exercise, you actually distribute the stresses on the bone. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you don't exercise mm -hmm. or you lack activity, you tend to lose bone mass faster. Mm. So one of the most um, easy ways of preventing osteoporosis in women, we always say you be active. Right. Right. You do weight bearing walks, right. games, it doesn't have to be hardcore sports. Okay, mm -hmm. and the next slide that we're seeing, uh, oh, we'll this... just need you to take us through these slides. Alright, fine. Uh, this is one of the classical uh, injuries in oh, uh, sports. Okay. Right? So you have a twisting injury to the knee mm -hmm. and uh, you might tear your ACL, uh, anterior cruciate ligament, that's the ligament that stabilizes the knee. Right. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of this in footballers. Ah, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what kind of uh, what kind of treatment Treatments. can you give to someone okay. with that painful injury? Yeah, this is interesting because um, when you initially get injured, uh, firstly, it will be prudent to stop playing. Mm. Okay, once you have pain, you need to stop. Mm. Okay, period. No, no yep. bargains. Yep. Mm. Tell your coach you can't play. Mm -hmm. But the second thing is that you need to ice the joint. Right. Because uh -huh. uh, when you ice and you rest the joint, you actually give, give it time to allow the swelling to actually reduce All and right, that okay. also helps the pain. So something is what we're looking on the screen yeah. right now. Uh, if you have this kind of a kneecap injury, I'm assuming uh -huh. there's a kneecap injury. Yeah, it's a knee injury, knee the injury. whole knee. Now, uh, you ice the place first? Yes. That would, that's you, your recommendation? Yeah, you need to rest. Uh -huh. You need to ice it, uh -huh. preferably for the first 48 hours. Wow. Okay. Okay. Alright, you can use... I mean, the easiest way is to just crush ice, put right. it in a plastic bag. Right. Uh -huh. and with a towel and put it over there for 20 minutes right. every two hours mm, okay. all right and then you need to elevate the part so mm. if it's the knee just make sure that it's slightly higher than the hip mm -hmm. all right and then uh, you maybe need to use a bandage mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. just compress it but what's important you need to know whether it's an injury that you can just treat at home right. or you need to go to the hospital so okay okay if you can't Oh, oh, yeah, okay. you can share. This is quite graphic, but yeah, yeah. The, okay, the, it's quite graphic. what kind of treatments? Um, okay, you were asking me about the options and the technology that we have. Yes. I think I think we have it all. We have okay. it all. Currently, yeah. yeah. It depends from centre to centre. Mm -hmm. uh, this is basically an endowment centre. Okay, and, and, and this exactly. is what kind of So this is all the, injury? this is the ligament reconstruction, minimally ligament invasive. Reconstruction. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we actually now do it, we no longer open big incisions. Right. We just put in portals to put in the camera mm -hmm. and then through that we are already trained to do the whole mm. uh, reconstruction in the joint. Mm -hmm. So it's very minimally invasive, mm. it's not so damaging to the joint mm -hmm. okay. but we do the job just like we would do if we opened it up completely. Okay. 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 Now, okay. Doctor, we've talked about uh, sports medicine as, as uh, a preventive measure mm -hmm. and also okay. you know how to handle it. Um, talking about sports medicine as a career, uh, in your opinion, in your personal opinion, uh, how viable is that in, in, in today's society? I mean, do you see a lot of uh, openings for uh, youngsters to pick up sports medicine as a career? Okay. Um, I think there is a big scope in the future, mm -hmm. okay. even now. I hope there is because from orthopedics, I've moved on a lot into sports. Mm, okay. okay uh, there are programs even in Malaysia. Mm -hmm. There is a structured program for sports medicine. Mm -hmm. All right. A lot of orthopedists are also going into sports medicine. I feel that as we become more active, yeah. mm -hmm. all right, this area has to expand to right. accommodate that. Mm -hmm. So it's just a natural progression. Okay. So for those of us who are in sports medicine, we yeah. already see that you know people are becoming aware. That's mm -hmm. right. You're having a topic on TV. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that shows that people are already becoming interested in it. Okay. Uh, maybe as a last question, um, I was thinking that yeah, something about along the line that you know you had uh, you have preventions, you have treatment, but how about those who has really serious injury? Can they go back to doing um, serious sports or? Uh, uh, after a serious injury, yeah. they still have a, you know, a one or two year gap. Uh, gap of still doing physiotherapies and still not doing something active. Yeah, because um, essentially it's this: uh, mm -hmm. when when we treat mm -hmm. patients, we actually ask them what are their demands, yeah. mm -hmm. what do they expect from the treatment. You mm -hmm. know, you just can't go and fix them. Mm -hmm. uh, you really need to tell them what they can and cannot do. Mm -hmm. uh, elite athletes, you need to actually tell them whether they can go back because that's the first question that they will ask you. Right. All right. Now, uh, recreational athletes, the ones who usually get injured. Yeah. Uh, you will need a period of rehabilitation. It can, right. be, it can be one to two years. Uh, 
depending nowadays on the injury, we hope that yeah it depends on the injury right. but but with uh, all these minimally invasive techniques mm. it's normally not that okay. long not that all right long. Yeah. well doctor thank you so much for your time uh, mm -hmm. we really appreciate you coming Welcome. in and enlightening us about sports medicine it's yes. really lovely to know about this uh, and the fact that for people out there i guess we have to be a bit more careful isn't it oh yeah <laughs> thank you thank you yes. so much okay. very uh, most importantly warm up and warm down don't That's just right. go and drink your tea yeah. after you run a two hour marathon oh, yeah, talking about marathon we had that topic after this so stay tuned but we have hot happenings first with fuzz name with right. pure natural and comfort take it away